Just in case I say something intelligent. <clears throat> okay, so at the retreat last week, uh, Mike did something I thought was really neat. He had Gino Belfari, who is the head of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and Mike Meadler, who's the head of Century 21, on stage, <clears throat> which I thought was pretty cool. We, you know, we always have agents, and he brings on like you know the Arch and and Vulcan and all those people. And I, at least to my knowledge, at least in the last six, seven years, I don't remember him ever bringing on the CEOs or heads of companies. So I don't know, maybe some of you remember, maybe he did it before and I just don't remember. So I, I thought it was pretty neat to get their perspective. <clears throat> and we'll talk more about some of the things that they had talked about. But one of the things that stood out to me uh, was when Gino said there's four disciplines that agents really need to have today to separate themselves from the rest of the market. Now, he didn't go into detail of the four, he listed the four disciplines, which I'll tell you what they are. He didn't go into detail of what they mean. So what I did is I took those four disciplines and I wrote down a bunch of notes on how those disciplines apply to our business and things that we're doing on a regular basis. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> now, again, these are coming from guys uh, that are pretty big. I mean, they're very, they're big hitters in terms of the real estate business. They've been around, they know some things. So I thought it was very valuable. So here are the four disciplines. I'm going to tell you the four disciplines and then we'll, we'll have some notes under each one. <clears throat> the four disciplines that Gino had mentioned that real estate agents need today in order to separate themselves from the competition are this. Number one is focus. Number two is leverage. Number three is engagement. And number four is accountability. Now, I don't know if these are listed in a an, this order for any particular reason, but these are the four disciplines. So again, it's focus. <clears throat> number one, number two is leverage. Number three is engagement. And number four is accountability. These are the four disciplines that he said. <clears throat> you need to have in order to separate yourself from the competition in today's market. <laughs> so let's talk about these. So let's start with focus. So I'm curious on your end, when I say focus, or in this case, what Gino was saying, focus, the, the discipline of focus, what do, you, what do you think that is? What do you associate with focus as in terms of your business? What do you think that, give me some examples of what that would be. Anyone want to chime in? Tunnel vision, just uh, look for appointments. and So a clear vision on looking for appointments, you know, what you're going to do with your time. Okay, got it. Thank you. What else? Your activities to reach your goals. What are your activities to reach your goals? Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. Having a clear focus on that. What else? Be in the moment. Be in the moment. Maricela says, be in the moment. Yeah. Focus on the here and now. Absolutely. Good. What else? Focus on your numbers. Focus on your numbers. Sure. You have to know your numbers. Well, we talk about that all the time. And they, they mentioned that at the retreat. Who was an expressive, by the way? If you remember, the person on stage was an expressive and they track their numbers every single day. So don't don't give me whatever lame excuse you want. You guys want to use for those. Focus of you on know. your schedule. Focus on your schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on the schedule. Sure. Absolutely. Good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> so I wrote down some of the very, very similar things in terms of focus. Here's what I wrote down. Focus means a clear understanding of your goals. <laughs> One thing I wrote down is a clear understanding of your goals. My favorite saying that I say all the time, and some of you have heard me say this over and over and over again, is that if you don't know what you're going to exchange the money for, you're not going to do the work because prospecting sucks. 
Okay. So you need to have a clear understanding of your goals. What do you really want to accomplish? What are you really doing the work for? What are you going through all this for? You know, when you, when you make the money, what are you going to do with the money? <clears throat> and what I, what I also have that on focus in terms of understanding your goals is that your goals can change. So you need to constantly be updating your goals. Could they change? Could it be something new? Could it be something different? I've already accomplished this, so I need to add something more. Okay. And then you need to have your goals in front of you all the time. Otherwise, you'll forget. Okay. Now, I know that seems crazy. Like, well, I would never forget my goals. Let me ask you this. Be honest. Anyone ever gone to work simply because it was Tuesday and that's what you were supposed to do? <laughs> yes. Right. We're all guilty of that. Okay. And if you're not, your nose is growing, right? It means you're lying. <laughs> okay. We've all been guilty of that at some point, but it's Tuesday. Yeah. I'm getting up. I go to work, right? That means you're not, but that, that means you're not connected with your goals. You're not going to work because the goals are on top of mind. So they have to be top of mind. I wrote down here in focus. Okay. This is something that Josie had mentioned, a schedule designed around production. Do you have a clear focus with a schedule designed around production? Now, this is really hard. And it's funny because at the retreat, I went to lunch with a number of agents. I went to dinner with a number of agents. I obviously talked to a lot of people, the breaks and things like that. And I, everyone, you know, Neil always asks people, you know, whenever we go to lunch or dinner, hey, the cost of admission is you have to tell me what you learned, right? <clears throat> and most people, the most popular answer is I got to, I got to get on the schedule. I got to get on the schedule which is always really tough in real estate because you're an independent contractor. You don't clock in, you don't clock out, and it's virtually impossible for you to be fired, right? Because even if we said, you know what, we don't want you with our firm anymore, the firm next door would hire you. So having a schedule is, is a very difficult thing, but you really need to focus on a schedule. Number one is create a schedule. Two is make sure the schedule is designed around production. So what percentage of your day should be based on money-making activities? 80. 80. 80% 80 of your day should be based around money-making activities. So figuring out which CRM I want to use is not a money-making activity. I don't care how hard you try to convince me. And some of you push really hard on that. <laughs> Robert, I'm telling you, I got to figure this out. This is a money-making machine. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh -huh. If you sold your clients as hard as you're selling me on why you're spending so much time focusing on a CRM, man, your CRM would be full. You know what I mean? So 80% of your day should be based around production. So you have to have a clear focus. You have to have a clear schedule and it has to be designed around production. Your schedule also, as I mentioned yesterday, it has to be realistic to your availability. Otherwise, you're not going to have a focus on your schedule. I wrote down here on focus, you need to have a commit focus on your commitment to skills. Which skills do you really want to focus on? Which skills do you really want to commit to enhancing? So let me give you an example. Well, I want to learn the scripts. Which one? Which ones? I want to get better at closing. Okay. This is not hard. You sign the contract, please. Okay, closing solved. So what's the next skill that we, <laughs> we want to try to work on, right? So what's the focus? What skill do you want to work on? I wrote down underneath that, this, your sources. Do you have a clear focus on which sources you are going to be using to generate business? Well, I do a little bit of this. I do a little bit of that. I do a little bit of this, a little bit of this. I kind of do this. I dabble into that. Yeah. What's your commitment? I'm committing to this source. Remember when, when Tony Smith was on a couple of weeks ago, he said that we don't succeed at our sources because we just give up on them after a week or after, well, I did just listed, just, I want to really hit just listed, just sold in my area. I did it this week. I made 60 contacts. I'm good. Yeah. Didn't get anything out of it. It's like, well, yeah, you're never going to get anything out of it if you just do it for a week. You know, well, you know, I'm working on expired, but, you know, I made a couple calls, didn't really like it, I'm moving on. So I'm moving on to a different source. We keep moving from source to source 
And so we're not getting really good at any particular source. So focus on what are the sources I want to commit to. And there's no right or wrong answer. Could be expired, it could be for sale by owners, it could be just listed, could be just sold, could be a neighborhood. I want to be a condo king, queen. I want to be the one that helps all the elderly people downsize. I want to be the one that will focus. We have people that focus on demographics in terms of uh, languages. You know, I want to focus on people that speak certain languages. I want to focus on certain neighborhoods, price points. You know, what are the sources that you want to commit to? You need to have a clear focus on that. I wrote down here on focus is, do you, are you focused on the fact that success takes time? Or are you just focused on how do I, how do I get rich today? Okay. You know, the, the, uh, the mega millions thing is up to a billion dollars. Oh, did it go? Season. Nobody won? Nobody won. It's up to a billion dollars. Now here's the thing. If you're looking for overnight richness, there's your shot. Okay. Go buy some tickets. And there it is. If you're looking for overnight richness in real estate, if that's your focus on how do I get rich today? How do I get paid tomorrow? That's not going to happen. Success takes time in this business. So I need to focus on long-term success in real estate. Is my focus on short-term success or long-term success? Yes. I have to focus on the activities, as we said, to get things done, but I have to focus real estate as long term. If this is a quick fix, if this is a quick buck, it's not going to happen. Your focus is off. This is just not going to be the industry for you. I'm just being honest. Okay. So where's your focus on that? And then I wrote down here underneath all of this in terms of focus on committing to the sources, the skills is that I think if you focus on all of these things, you have about a three to six month window before the rest of the industry starts coming back to this reality of where we're in right now. Because at some point, agents and brokers are gonna figure this out that they need to adjust. Right now, there's a lot of brokers and owners that have not. Have I ever mentioned to you that you're in the right place? <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever said that you're in the right place? But at some point they'll figure it out and go, oh my gosh, we need to adjust. We need to do this. We need to do that. Right now, all they're doing is cutting costs. You know, so they're laying off people. Okay. Which is stupid. We're, we're hiring people. We're hiring staff. That's just, you know, different mentality. But if you focus on these things, you have about a three to six month window to really capture market share, to really hone your skills, to really get out there and get some business before some of these agents start to catch up. Okay, so those are some of the things I wrote down when it comes to focus, focus on those particular things on top of the stuff that you all mentioned as well on focus. Questions at all on terms of the discipline of focus? Oh, okay. All right. The next discipline, number two, was leverage. Leverage. So when you hear leverage, give me an example of what you think when it, when it comes to leverage. What does he mean by utilize leverage in your business? Your past clients and sphere. Leverage your past clients and sphere. Mm -hmm. Sure. They love you. They like you. Leverage them for more. Good. What else? Tools, what else when you hear you leverage? Use. What, Tyrone? The tools that you use. Leverage the tools. Yeah. You know, you learn the skills. Are you are you leveraging them or are you just learning? Anyone else? For leverage? This one's a little more difficult. Delegate. Delegation. Oh, delegate. Yeah. Leverage. Leverage your people. Leverage your sources. Absolutely. 100%. Delegate. Good, 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 good. Okay, so here's what I wrote down. Very similar to some of the stuff. First thing I wrote down under leverage, just like Josie says, is your database. Leverage your database. These are your database are people that know who you are. There could be a past client, a center of influence, someone you've built through your just listed, just sold calls or whatever the case may be. These are people that the majority of your business is gonna come from. Are you leveraging them to the degree that you should be leveraging them? <clears throat> so let me give you an example. Okay. 
well, you know, they, they know I'm in real estate. So, you know, I'm not going to bombard them with information. Okay. Anyone here ever had somebody in their database use another agent? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The rest yep. of you were liars or not paying attention. Okay. Oh, or you, or you don't, or you don't know because you haven't called to ask. <laughs> oh, Robert, I don't know if they've used another agent because I haven't talked to any of them in uh, ten years. Every single or one. Or it's just of us, too painful. <laughs> it's too painful to find out the truth. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Look, I've shared the stories before of it happening to me. So we can't use that as, well, they know I'm in real estate. They will use other agents. And it'll probably be the agent that's next to you on this screen because they're probably prospecting them. Okay. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say something to you that some of you are not going to like. But I'm going to be honest with you. If you lose out a deal to the agent that's next to you on the screen, I still get paid. So, so while I'm rooting for you <laughs> to work your database, <laughs> if you lose out to the agent next to you on the screen, I, you know, the company is still going. All right. But don't be that person. Okay. Leverage your database, be in touch with them, be a resource to them, ask them questions. Who do you know? How can I help? You know? Here's another thing I mentioned on leverage your database. Are you leveraging your database to get more database? So let me give you an example. We always ask our database for who do you know that wants to buy or sell? Well, what if you asked your database or, hey, do you like that I give you monthly updates, bi-monthly updates? Yeah, absolutely. Do you know anyone else that might be open to hearing a, a bi-monthly update on the real estate market? Oh yeah, my brother, my sister, my so-and-so. Okay, great, do you mind if I give them a call? They're not interested in buying or selling. I don't care. I just want to give them market updates. Now, imagine if every, if, if you had 100 people in your database and all of them gave you one name just to add to your database. You just doubled your database. That could lead to more referrals and more deals. Leverage your database. Okay. I also put down leverage here. Leverage the brand. Now, for those of you that work for Century 21, I know we have agents from all over the place, whatever brand you work for, leverage your brand. Century 21, you have a great leverage. You, every, you know, everyone knows the name, Century 21. You could talk about our office. Where, you know, do you know that our office, there's 14,000 offices in the world for Century 21. Do you know we're ranked number 15 in terms of production? That's pretty good. So good job. You all are fantastic. You're 15th in the world out of 14,000 offices. So, hey, why should I use you? Well, one of the reasons you should use me, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is that out of 14,000 offices in the world, I belong to number 15 in terms of production. So let me ask you, do you think that we know what we're doing over here? Yeah. It's one of the reasons you should work with me. You should work with me because we have a broker that, in my opinion, is one of the best brokers there is from a legal standpoint, ethics standpoint. So let me tell you something. This can be a very complicated transaction. You need a broker that knows what's going on. And we have one of those. That's why we're one of the top agents in the world, top offices in the world. It's leverage off the success. Hey, what are you going to do to get my home sold? Well, I don't know if you know this, Mr. and Ms. Seller, but what we do at our company is we do a company hot list. What that means is that when I take your listing, an email goes out to all of our agents showcasing the new listing. The benefit of that is we are the number 15 company in, out of 14,000 in the world, which means we have some high producing agents that probably have a lot of buyers. So your listing is going to get exposure to one of the highest producing offices in the world who have a bunch of buyer leads. Now, is that of value to the seller? Oh, yeah. What I just said. Is yes. anyone listening to what I'm saying right now? Because this is pretty good shit. Yeah, I was about to. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> I'm sorry yeah. for cursing, but <laughs> this is this is good stuff. Okay. Is, are you seriously? You're num we're number 15 out of the whole 14 the whole world. real estate agents in the world. Number 15. Of Century 21. I did not know that. 
14,000 Century 21 offices globally. We are ranked number 15 in terms of production. Oh, of all of the Century 21 offices. Yeah, we're number 15 out of 14,000. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, we, we hire well. You know, we, we, hire, we hire good agents that know what they're doing. And we just try to help a little bit. Okay. But leverage the brand. What about this? You know, if you work for Century 21. Now, in Southern California, do we live in an international real estate market? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, great. So, as a matter of fact, in the last 12 months, $100 billion in California real estate was bought from overseas investors. Okay. So, imagine being on a listing presentation. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, as you know, we live in an international real estate market. Yes, great. So to market your property the best, not only do we need to market it locally, but internationally as well. Luckily for you, we have 14,000 offices worldwide that all have access to your listing through our Century 21 portal, which means that if there's an investor that wants to purchase from China, they have access to it from Century 21, which means their agents will probably go to our listings first, which could create more offers for you, more buyers looking at your property. Do you think that's a value? Well, yeah, I think that's a value. So here's what we're going to do, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Century 21 is going to take care of your international marketing. The MLS is going to take care of your national marketing. And I'm going to make 150 contacts a week locally. So you're going to have local, national, and international marketing. Is that what you're looking for in an agent? Yes. Great. Sign the contract. Is that presentation useful to a seller? Yes. I like that. Thank you, Jack. Yes. Okay. And you could use that for everybody. They don't have to be an international client. Let me tell you something. Born and raised Southern California. My assumption is that people overseas have a lot of money. So if you told me, hey, look, if a client in China wants to come buy your house here at the beach, I'd be like, I'm assuming they do. You know? Leverage the brand. Okay. Leverage the office success. I put down here, leverage your systems. As Jack said, your delegations, right? Your delegated, your, your staff is part of your systems, your title rep, your, your escrow officer, your transaction coordinator, your lenders, your warranty people, leverage them. They should be calling your client to talk about title. They should be calling your client to talk about escrow. They should be calling your client to talk about warranty services, insurance options, not you. Leverage them. Leverage your, your CRM. Do you have all your contacts in a CRM where you can set reminders of when you need to call them? You can make notes on previous calls. Are you utilizing that or are you still just calling people out of your cell phone or post-it notes everywhere? What about, do you have auto replies set up on your system? When you know you're not going to be available, do you have an auto reply set up? You know. Do you, you, do you utilize the MLS systems? I mean, we talk about info sparks all the time, but do you utilize all the stuff that you get in the MLS? Those are leveraging. I mean, you pay for it. Are you leveraging those stats and those systems that you can utilize? That's all stuff you can do. Are you leveraging Curbio, which is the company that we had on here that will do the repairs for the client and then get paid at closing? That's a powerful tool to use on a listing presentation. Hey, you know, I got to do these repairs. Well, look, we work with a company named Curbio and they'll do all this for you and you just pay them at the close of escrow. Great. Are you leveraging those kinds of systems? I wrote down here under leverage, are you leveraging agents leaving the business? Let me tell you something. As somebody that recruits every day, a lot of agents leaving the business. And you know some of them. Ask them if you can work their database. Yeah. Hey, you're leaving the business. You know people. Let me work your database. You're not doing it. Off Robert, of yes. Um, I just Googled Century 21 and you're and Century 21 translates listings into 36 languages and uh, more than 20 currencies. There you go. <laughs> I know I'm I know one of those. 
Yeah, there you go. See, leverage the brand. Thank you, Donna. I didn't know that, right? Agents leaving the business or agents just not, they're active, but they're not working their database. Give, offer them a 25% referral fee. There are some agents that if you gave them a 25% referral fee would make more money than they've made in the last 15 years by just asking, asking them to work, if you can work their database. Leverage that. Leverage the fact that agents are not working, that they're leaving the business. Take their database. Okay. Part of leverage. And then adds a very simple one. Leverage your success, your past success, your current success. Every listing you get, you that should generate one more deal. That has to be the mentality when you get a listing. I got a listing. This is going to sell. I need to leverage this listing for one more deal, whether it's a buyer that I'm double ending, whether it's another listing in the area, whether whatever it is, I have to walk away from this listing with one more deal. I have this gold right here. I've got to leverage it for one more deal. That has to be your mentality. That's how you keep the ball going. All right, that's leverage. Now, engagement. Engagement's the third discipline. So when I say engagement, what do you think that means? What, what comes to your mind when I say engagement as a discipline? Participate. Participate. Yeah. Participate. Good. What else? When you hear the term engagement, what else do you, what else do you think of? Show up. Show up. Show up. Participate. Yeah, absolutely. So here's what I wrote down under engagement. Very much to what you two just said. Get in the game. Get in the game. Get in the game. Show up. Participate. Be active. Do something. Ask questions. Leave voicemails. Okay? Set up meetings. Get together on Zoom. Whatever it may be. But get in the game. You know, as Donna was doing, she was, you know, waiting for her lunch. She was passing out business cards. She was talking to people while she's waiting there. Get in the game. Get the cards handed out. You know, you got digital cards, you got paper cards, get rid of them. Okay. The goal is if you have any business cards, the goal should be to get rid of them. Okay. Now I know that sounds simple. I'm not trying to make a joke about that, but the goal is I'm ordering business cards to get rid of them, not to have them. You know, I got this nice business card, little thing that I, I have on my card. No, no, the goal is I got to get rid of these things. Okay. I have this cool digital business card. I got to get, I got to get it out, get it out to the people, get in the game. I wrote down here in terms of engagement is simply making more contacts, talking to more people wrote down here, contacts equals contracts. Isn't that nifty? All right. Get in the engagement, more contacts, more conversations, more talking to people, more real estate conversations. I wrote down here, ask questions, get them to open up. Engagement is, there's engagement in terms of participating, but real engagement is getting them to participate. As we're going through these meetings, do I tend to ask questions of you to participate? Yes or no? Yes. Do I get frustrated when you don't participate? Yes. Yeah, yeah, everyone answers that yeah. one. <laughs> yes, he tends to get fairly frustrated when the, you don't participate. Yeah, yes, I do, because I, this is the only way that engagement works is I need you to participate. I need you to open up. Otherwise, we're, we're not connected and this, it's not going to hit. Okay, it's the same thing with you. You're with a client. You can give them all the great things in the world, but if you don't get them to open up, if there's no active dialogue, the engagement really isn't there. So you need to ask questions. Ask questions that get them to open up. Okay? So work on asking questions. I wrote down here in terms of engagement, be everywhere. Everywhere they are, be there. I call them. I door knock them. I do open houses in the area. I do flyers in the area. I do social media uh, marketing in the area. Everywhere they are, I'm there. They see me. I preview properties in the area. I'm always there. Everywhere your client, 
that's that's why we say call them email them and mail them so your database they get a phone call from you they hear your voice they get a mailer from you they see you they get an email from you they're reading something you're everywhere there's no it's way they can think of another real estate agent hey robert so you mean that this is a talking to people business i've heard that once or twice <laughs> i'm still i'm still trying to figure out if it's true <laughs> be everywhere right i wrote down here in terms of engagement exceptional customer service for those of you that went to the retreat last week how many times was customer service brought up oh boy ah, that was the whole thing right we talked about that a little bit yesterday but engagement is being available in customer service taking your customer service to another level that's part of engagement I wrote down here, engagement is know the stats and how to articulate them. So it's it's having conversations, but know the stats and, and can you articulate them? So here's what I mean. Well, in your area, listings are up and pendings are down. Okay, great. Can you articulate what that means to a seller or a buyer? Or do you just say that? You have to be able to articulate these things. The days on market is up. What does that mean to me as a homeowner? One of the um, speakers said we should be able to, uh, we should be practicing how to do the statistics. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great idea too. Because you have to remember, you have to remember that going back to the conversation that Michael Klein mentioned and, and other people have mentioned before, they're not in real estate. They don't know the lingo. Okay. So imagine, as I always say, imagine someone calls you and wants to talk about aerospace engineering. Well, I don't know if you know this, Robert, but in the world of aerospace engineering, when you take the diameter of this with the triangular rate of this, this, and this, and it's like, what the hell are you talking about? Well, in real estate, that's kind of sometimes what they, they don't understand what these mean. So can you present the numbers? Can you articulate in a way that they understand and it makes sense to them? You should practice that to Josie's point. Same thing here I wrote down our engagement is, can you give three to four value propositions as to why they should work with you? And can you articulate them in a positive way? Buyer or seller, because buyers also have options. Buyers have a lot of options. Do you have three to four value propositions as to why they should work with you and can you articulate with them? Let me give you an example. Well, why should you work with me? Well, I've been around for a long time. Okay. I know a lot of agents that have been around for a long time that haven't really done anything for a long time. I know a lot of agents that got the business yesterday that are already very active. So what, what is the value of being in the business for a long time? I live in the area. Great. Good for you. I live in the United States. I guess I should run for president. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I live in the area. Oh, okay. Well, goddamn, here you go. Take the listing. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. What does that mean? Where's the value, right? I know the market stats. I study this. You have to have three to four, three to four value propositions and be able to articulate them. Let me give you an example. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I preview two homes a day, which is 10 homes a week, which equals about 500 homes a year. Can I explain to you why that's a value? Yes. Okay. Well, I know everything that goes on in this marketplace. I know what a million dollar home looks like. I know what a fixer looks like. I know what kind of upgrades get the most money. I know exactly what all your neighbor's homes look like and how it compares. And therefore, when it comes to pricing property, there's no one in this marketplace that's been inside more homes and knows the value of every single home. Do you think that's a value to you? The fact that I've been in 500 homes in the last 12 months. Okay. That's articulating previewing property knowing the market, okay? Mr. or Mrs. Seller, I did you know that half the people in this area speak this language? Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I actually speak English and Spanish, and therefore I'm gonna have a better opportunity to communicate with more of the buyers and agents in this marketplace, which will help you negotiate the best term for your sale. 
that's using, that's articulating the value proposition. Questions on any of that? Yeah, give us another one. Give you, give you another one? <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay, I'll give you another one. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, one of my value propositions is that I'm going, once I take your listing, I'm gonna spend an hour and a half every single day for the first five days contacting people within a two mile radius of your house, seeing if they know anyone that wants to move into the area, which means by Friday of next week, I will probably have contacted 75 to 100 people promoting your listing and trying to find a buyer. Do you think that is a value to you? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, great. Robert. Yes, thank sir. you. I, I just finished using your first one on, on somebody. I told him that, you know, because they were mentioning Zillow and Redfin. And I said, how many, how many houses do you think the representative from Zillow saw before they gave you that valuation? And she goes, what do you mean? I says, well, how many people actually saw? Oh, they see the pictures in the in the, in the, on the computer. And I said, well, the great thing about me is that I've been inside most of these houses that I just finished showing you. And I saw all the little nooks and crannies that the professional photographers wouldn't take because obviously it wouldn't make it look as well as it did on there. So therefore you get a bird's eye view of what's really going on with these other houses. You know, wow. do you think that's, that's something that you can work with? Huge, 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 huge. Way to go, Armin, I love it. Not a huge. single word of my own either. <laughs> okay but 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 okay armin just did that i just rattled off three very quickly i could i could do this you know as captain america would say i could do this all day <laughs> i'm not going to but my point is do you have three to four that you can just boom 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 like that you need to have that all right the last one is accountability accountability so we did focus leverage engagement accountability so when you hear accountability, what does that mean to you? What is that? What is an example of accountability in terms of a discipline? Showing up for script practice and prospecting. Sure, sure. Showing up. So here's what I wrote down for accountability. This one's pretty simple. Okay. The discipline of accountability is simply create four to five things that you are willing to be held accountable for. And you're okay if people push on you for not doing it. That is the discipline of accountability. Four to five things that you're willing to be held accountable for. And you're okay with people pushing on you if you don't do it. Don't give 10 things because look at, let's be honest. We're not going to do 10 things to be held accountable for. This is not going to happen. Okay. But you could do four to five because it could be simple as Donna said, well, I got to, I got to be in the office at a certain time to do role play. I've got to make this many contacts. I've got to be at the gym this many times. I got to wake up this time. Okay. Whatever your accountability is four to five things that you feel are really powerful for your business list them out with your accountability partners and then be okay if you don't do it and your accountability partner says well why didn't you do it <clears throat> the biggest reason we don't like accountability is because if we don't do it then someone says why didn't you do it and then we get frustrated we get mad so then we say well i don't want to do accountability anymore you can't do that now your accountability partner should never be mean by the way so if your accountability partner is mean get a new accountability partner but your accountability partner should just be simply, you all know the best accountability partner? It's just someone that says why. Best accountability partner you can have is someone that makes you come up with whatever lame excuse you want to come up with. My goal was 30 contacts today. Well, how many did you get? 25. Well, why didn't you get 30? Best accountability partner is just that. Why didn't you get to 30? Because then you have to come up, well, you know, because I did this, 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 and this. And you feel awful because you're, you know you're coming up with a lame excuse as you're saying it. And all they had to do was say, why didn't you get there? My goal was to be in the office at eight. What time did you get there? 8.05, why didn't you get there at eight? Best accountability partner, just, just says why. Find an accountability partner that can do that for you and then be okay with them saying that. That's a, the discipline of accountability. And pick four to five things that you're willing to be held accountable for. If, four to, if you've never done accountability, pick one. Pick one thing 
and then get comfortable with doing that one thing and being held accountable for it and then go to two, three, four, but don't ever go past four to five. It's just too much. Questions on what we went over today. All right, very good. All right, well, hopefully there was one or two things in there that were helpful for you. I was pretty proud of what I put together. Good job, Robert. <laughs> it was excellent, Robert. I appreciate you, Robert. <laughs> I know I get yeah, no, I get frustrated. You know, I know I get frustrated sometimes, but that's only because I I you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason I get frustrated sometimes is because I really want to help. I really truly want to help. And you can call this ego, and that's fine, but I really think that some of this stuff is helpful. And, and that's the only reason I get frustrated because I, for those of you that know me fairly well, I'm not a mean person. Okay. I'm like the, the biggest cheerleader you could have. That's the only reason I get frustrated. Is I'm like, I think this can help. And I really want to help. <laughs> okay. So don't ever take it personal. If I, if you think like, man, he seems to be getting frustrated. Like it's, it's not you. It's just, I just I have a passion for helping and I really want to help. Okay. All right, everybody. We've got a whole afternoon still of stuff to do. We've got to get.